Welcome back to another Diamond Dynasty game. This is the squad I am going to be rocking with in this game. So first off, Lucroy is back. Call me a psychopath, but Lucroy is back in the lineup. I mean, Johnny Bench was not getting it done. He was not even close to getting it done behind the plate. He was not blocking anything. Lucroy hasn't been doing Hasn't been doing well either, but maybe Lucroy can come back in, join the squad, and possibly do something because, yeah, it was just terrible what he was doing before. And if you're wondering why I'm pitching this uh, flashback Max Scherzer, it is because I am currently trying to finish the Chris Archer program, and you need 7Ks with a rookie flashback, I'm pretty sure. So this uh, Max Scherzer, I was hoping to get that with. That's not even that bad of a card, if you ask me. Like, he has a good variety of pitches. I think he throws around 95 on the gun with the heater. So this is a pretty solid uh, pitcher for Silver, 100%. So that is why I was using him. Griffey is also back in the lineup. If you're wondering why that is the case, too, it is because my mission finally reset. I'm, actually, I'm not even sure when it did. It could have been a couple days ago, so hopefully that wasn't the case. But I just checked uh, earlier... T wait, earlier, yes, it was early yesterday, I was going to say earlier today, but it wasn't today, it was yesterday I checked that mission, and it did reset, so I'm just going to try and use Griffey, man, like, I'm not going to use him in every single game, obviously, like, I'm probably just going to put him in, uh, put him on the bench, and then put him in RBI situations and stuff, just to try and get, try and get him a better chance of getting RBIs, because, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for, the RBI is going to be the problem with that mission, I mean, the 10 home runs in 30 games shouldn't be that much of a problem with somebody with 93 power against righties, so that's why he's back in, but yeah, don't, don't feel like I'm going to leave him in the lineup for 30 games, I'm definitely going to be switching up the lineup a little bit, Granderson, I can't take him out of the lineup, dude, I can't, it's impossible, the guy is legitimately a walking glitch, you want proof, there it is, this is why this guy is a glitch, first pitch, of the game for for myself I get is leaving the yard in milliseconds so Granderson already getting a solo shot on the board and then first pitch of Barry Larkins at bat he's slapping one to right field so the squad is possibly gonna get something going early in this game this guy hit a solo shot with double E Luis Gonzalez hit a moon shot in the previous game looking to do the same in this game That is yet another 500 foot home run. This game is insanity, man. 500 foot home runs happening all the time. That's crazy, man. 510 feet later, that lands in McCovey Cove. It could have possibly landed past McCovey Cove. So Luis Gonzalez, yeah, past couple games has been has been on the juice. I'm thinking that Barry Larkin and Luis Gonzalez, these cards are juiced to the max, man. Luis Gonzalez has been going off since he's joined the squad. This is, what, the fourth game? I think this is the fourth game he's played so far, but either way, he's been definitely doing some damage at the plate. Barry Larkin has been doing the same. Uh, got a base hit to begin this game, too. So Luke Croy's first at-bat looking to get something going with him, but unfortunately, that was just a ground out to shortstop, but I did cash in a run, so I guess he did do his job. Gets the RBI in the process, and then Rendon steps up to the plate. Eighth batter of the inning grounds out, so that is all said and done for the first inning. The squad gets off to yet another good start. And listen, listen, before anybody gets their anger issues in a knot, everyone always seems to say that, you know, if you, if you play somebody with a team that isn't as good as yours, everyone's saying, you had an unfair, unfair advantage, and yes, I understand that. This guy didn't have a, you know, didn't have a squad that was as good as mine. Did I choose my opponent? Did I? No. You do not choose your opponents. That is not my fault that I got matched up with somebody with a squad that wasn't as good as mine. I could have easily, I had, the sa I had the exact same chance of playing somebody with a better squad than me, which I have done several times so far. And this is the, this is the funny thing, too, is when you do have a really good squad, people will sit there and call, some people will sit there and call you a loser. And some dude actually commented on my videos and I was laughing forever. I don't even know why. It wasn't even that funny thinking back on it now. But he was just like, damn, do you even shower you know life? And I, I was just sitting there laughing at that for like five minutes because it's hilarious. Because if you have a good team, people will sit there and call you a loser and a no life. But then if you don't have a good squad, people will be like, your team's boring. Get a better team. It's a lose-lose situation, but it's just funny either way, man. I can't help the opponents I play. I cannot help. That everybody doesn't have, you know, all diamonds. And 
I'm not gonna I'm not one of those guys who sits there and plays with 99 overall players at every single position if you've been watching my video since MLB 16 you can definitely back me up on that I was the king of using gold players I think I think honest to God three out of the five three out of my five favorite uh, cards in MLB 16 were gold players Carl Crawford the flashback Andre Ethier uh, who else I'm drawing a blank because I'm just trying to think of all my favorite cards. Really, the only diamonds I really enjoyed using in MLB 16, Grady Sizemore, uh, Jose Altuve, 95, Ryan Braun. There may have been some other cards I'm just forgetting right now. But yeah, man, I was the king of using gold cards and talking about how gold cards are, are just as good as diamonds. And if yeah, if you've been watching my video since MLB 16... That's 100% been the case, man. I I thought Carl Crawford and the flashback Andre Ethier were better than a bunch of diamonds in that game, and I really enjoyed using those cards. So, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to get, uh, you know, a, a half-decent squad that's enjoyable to watch. Obviously, like I said, if you don't have a really good squad, people aren't going to be very interested in watching your team. So, I, did, I wanted, like, I want to get a pretty decent squad, you know what, I'm, you know what I mean? So, I'm just going to try and get some really good players. I mean, that is understandable, but I'm just saying, it is not my, it's not my fault if I, you know, play somebody with a squad that isn't as good as mine. I wish I could, if I could choose my opponents, I would choose people with better squads than me, because if you're playing people with, you know, not really good squads, then obviously you do, you know, you probably, if, so, if you're facing somebody with not a really good pitcher, a bronze pitcher or something, chances are you're going to, you're going to do pretty decent at the plate, and you're not going to get a challenge. You're not going to get better at the game if you're playing people with teams worse than you. To be honest, I get excited when I play teams that are better than me. 100% I get excited when I play people who have much better squads than me, because that's the only way you're going to get better at this game, is by playing people with really good squads, and if they're really good at the game. So I was just, I'm just, I hope, every single game I hope that I get a person with a really good squad, it just... It was unfortunate in this game. I wasn't able to match up with somebody with a really good squad. But either way, I was kind of getting lucky in this game too, which has kind of been the case the past couple of games. I'm not even going to lie. Eric Caro somehow finds the grass right there. And then Kipnis steps up to the plate as Griffey advanced to third base. But this guy's making a very heads-up play. Very smart heads-up play right there, I guess I should say. Getting the out-at-home plate, so I'm not getting the insurance. It's still only a three-run game. I mean, just watching the first couple innings of this game, you would, you know, probably think that I should be up 10 nothing. Well, not really 10 nothing, but still, more than a three-run lead. This guy did hit two solo shots, one with Encarnacion, one with Matt Kemp. So, yeah, he is within three. And if I want, you know, to try and get this game out of reach early, I'm going to have to do something with Lucroy in this at-bat. But right there, not doing something with Lucroy again. So that's just a fly ball right in front of home plate. So Luke Roy is already 0 for 2 in this game. I don't think he's really let any pass balls go by so far, but that's always that's always the case when Luke Roy is in. So we're just going to have to wait and see what the rest of this game or what happens in the rest of this game. So first out of this inning fly ball or ground out or yeah, ground out right to the shift. So unfortunately for the shift, Morales wasn't able to get a base hit right there. So yeah, I mean Scherzer was actually doing pretty decent in this game. I think I had around 6 I think I had around 6Ks through the first couple of innings, so it was looking good for the mission. This is why I'm using Scherzer, because I'm looking for the mission. And this is another reason why I'm playing in San Francisco every single game, too. If you've noticed, every single home game, or well not every single home game, but most of the home games I play are either at Coors Field or uh, in San Francisco. It's because I'm trying to get triples. I'm trying to get triples for the player epic Eddie Matthews. I am almost done part one of that mission. I'm not even lying. I may show that in the next video just so people believe me. For that, if you don't know that yet, or if you don't know the mission yet, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say, if you don't know the mission yet for Eddie Matthews, I'm pretty sure you unlock that player epic for getting 100 home runs in Diamond Dynasty games. I think it's Diamond Dynasty games. Then you unlock a player epic for Eddie Matthews, a 99 overall card, which is probably going to be insane. That was another gold I liked using in MLB 16. It was like an 88 overall. He had nasty power versus righties, and he, he was a third baseman too, so it was good to use somebody like that, third base, a lefty. And yeah, that Eddie Matthews is going to be sick, but the first part is you have to get... Uh, you have to match his stats from his breakout season, I'm pretty sure. So you need a bunch of triples, uh, home runs, RBIs, and just you, just you just need statistics. And I am currently done three out of the five statistics for that mission. I just need, at this very moment, I'm not even lying, I need 32 RBIs and two more triples to be done part one of that mission. And I was saying, too, that I wouldn't even be, su be surprised at all if part three of that mission was just feeding players. 
So, possibly if I get through part one, part two may be something more difficult. It may take some time to do. But, like I said, part three of that mission might just be feeding players. It could be feeding Braves players. It could be feeding third baseman. It could be feeding Braco players. That's what I think it's going to be. I, if I, there may be a video on YouTube or something of how you get them. I'm not really sure yet. So, I'm just saying, in my, in my opinion, without seeing any, you know any proof of anything so far I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if part three of that mission was just feeding cards so I'm just trying to get through part one to see what part two is I'm gonna be done that hopefully in the next couple of days because like I said I just need 30 33 more uh, RBIs actually that make that may take a couple that may take I don't know how long it's gonna take to be honest but I just need two more triples and in San Francisco and a Coors Field that is more than possible with people with not even that good speed you get somebody with like 30 speed you find triples alley in San Francisco or you find the left center gap in a Coors Field that's almost a standout triple every single time so that's why I've been playing at these ballparks for every single home game pretty much I, I really want to get that 99 Eddie Matthews because yeah I did really like using the Eddie Matthews in uh, MLB 16 like I said I was going off with him at one point even though I didn't use him that much in the starting lineup he was a beast off the bench so if anyone's been watching my videos since you know Pat last summer I think it was when I had him and he was uh, pretty much just used off the bench for a little bit and he was just yeah every every single time he came in he was coming up with base hits or hitting home runs or something to the point where I did eventually put him in the starting lineup but yeah that was a pretty solid uh, gold card in that game for being an 88 he had like 97 power like I said so I don't even want to see the stats on the 90, 99 overall Eddie Matthews probably going to be ridiculous man so yeah I'm looking to get that card at some point in time but Luis Gonzalez yet again coming through that is a double this time so already hit a 510 foot uh, moon shot pretty much in this game Luis Gonzalez follows that up with a double so Griffey is up RBI situation for Griffey and need to get a home run on the board with Griffey too, but you know, I will accept that. Single to the right side, I mean, I'm swinging for the fences every single time, man. My square button is dangling off my damn controller from trying to hit home runs with this uh, Reds Griffey to try and get the 92 Griffey, and that would just be, that's just going to be good when I eventually get the 92 Griffey, so I don't have to worry about using the Reds Griffey anymore, but right there, pass ball. So is that Jonathan Lucroy behind the play? Possibly either way, I cash in yet another run. So I think that was uh, Luis Gonzalez scored from third base. So now I'm going up 6-2 in this game. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. So I mean, still it's still in reach. I mean, this guy, this guy is still in this game, man. Four run leads. I've been, every single game I say this. No, like it's not, it's not out of reach. If you're down by four runs, anything can happen. So right there, Eric Carroll, that ball kept carrying again. Did not leave the yard though, so able to advance Griffey to third base. So now Kipnis is up, shoots one down the third baseline. Kipnis yet again comes through. So Kipnis gets the RBI single right there. So now I'm going up 7-2 in this game. So now Luke Croy is up with one down. What is this? Miracles happen. Miracles do exist. Jonathan Lucroy comes up with a base hit. Not only a base hit, a triple. That is what I'm saying, man. See? You can find triples alley. That's a stand-up triple, even though Luke Corey has half-decent speed for a catcher, 100%, 50-something speed. That's very good speed for a catcher, to be honest. So, yeah, finds triples alley. Rendon is able to get an infield single right there. So, still, getting kind of lucky in this game. This guy puts in a lefty. How is Granderson a glitch, you ask? This is how. Lefty on lefty. Granderson stats versus lefties aren't even close to good. And he's getting another solo shot on the board, dude. This flashback Granderson is out of control. I mean, even against lefties, I've been doing crazy at the plate. So I don't even know how I can take him out of my lineup. So Granderson's already, what, three for four in this game so far? So this guy's able to uh, come, come through with a base hit right there. I put in Glenn Perkins. I find that I've kind of been doing uh, pretty bad, to be honest, with Glenn Perkins so far. But I guess... Like I said, when you got those pitchers with only, you know, a fastball and a slider, they can be pretty easy to read. All you got to do is just sit on the heat and then adjust to the slider. So this guy wasn't able to cash in that run. So all I need to do is just get some, one more run, and then the mercy rule will take effect in this game. So somebody like Eric Harris at the dish, that is more than likely to happen. So sitting on something high in the strike zone right there, able to connect and that leaves the yard and that is all said and done for this game like i said man i i really do wish i pray every single game i play people with really good squads but unfortunately 
unfortunately for everybody, we don't get to choose who we play, but that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and be on the lookout for some more videos tomorrow. And if you didn't see those two previous videos I posted today, they were from BR. Got a new squad, and it's pretty decent. Got the 99 Andre Dawson, so definitely check those videos out if you haven't yet.